So today we're gonna fill some holes for the carpenter bees. These little buggers get in there. We live in the Catskill mountain range up in uh, upstate New York in a log cabin. And I don't know, we have all these woods to eat, but they seem to like eating our house more than anybody else. So you can see where they get in there. They make these little holes in the most tricky spots. Like here's one right there. And in springtime they go in there and they dig the holes and they plant larvae. It doesn't go in too deep. There's another one right about there. They don't go too deep, but they they, uh, they turn right or left really fast. So they end up going in several inches in either direction. This is the same hole from the other side. You can see the previous owners used probably, this looks to me an awful lot like it's just caulking or even plaster at Paris or something. And I've noticed that they actually just redig those holes, so it's pretty useless. For this job, I recommend you use some sort of bug killer super spray. Um, I use Carpenter B, this stuff here from, I don't know, Spectre side. I don't know, I'm sure they're all good. Kills on contact, that's that's key uh, for the way I approach it with one of these long, like, uh, the doohickeys on the end. Uh, I have a hammer handy. I have uh, dowlings. I bought pre-drilled, pre-cut dowlings for furniture. This is like four or five bucks at, at Home Depot. I know it's kind of expensive. You could buy cheaper. You could use a stick even. So these are three-eighth dowels. I bought other ones. They've been pretty much useless. They're too small. I have some uh, steel wool. Um, and I got one of these, um, it's like a screwdriver thing, you know, Allen key end. But it's really great because you can hold on to it like this and just ram in things. Uh, some, some high quality carpenter glue I use. And then finally, uh, wad of tin foil. So there's your supplies. I use this really high end uh, hanger on a, on a, you know, to hang this up on the ladder. And of course you're going to need a ladder to get to the holes. You can see another one right in the center frame there. I'll try and zoom in when I, in my phone, it's a little tight, but there's one right there. A total giveaway having the sawdust right below. So look for those little giveaways. I climbed up a little higher and you can see the hole is pretty pronounced and actually extremely round. It's amazing that they can do that. There's all the gunk and crap that they spit out. Now, you Googled it to have a look at, you know, what the recommendations are. I'm kind of like the kind of guy who doesn't take two or three days to do something. I just want to get it done. So I got this Kills on Contact stuff. It foams up really fast. You can see, you spray it in, just plug it. And that foam's got nowhere to go but in. And it's just cooking them in there. Make sure you wear some really good quality gloves. You know, you want super high end protection there. Look how far in it goes. So, sorry to ruin your day there, bees. I read online that it could actually come out and, you know, surprise you if you're not careful. How I manage that is I just use this kill on contact stuff. They're not coming out. Okay, so the next step is take some, just a wad of, of steel wool and just kind of make a point at the end and just kind of force it in. This is where um, that little plunger, screwdriver, Allen key thing works really well because it makes it great. And if you use like a, a screwdriver, a typical screwdriver, you might end up not getting too far. I find that this works really good for me. I find that this works really good for me. Look at that. Pops right in. So this goes back pretty far, so I'm going to do a second one, and maybe even a third. Okay, so this is my third wad right now. It's still going in there pretty deep. It's really surprising. So I'm going to switch now to a um, wad of uh, tin foil. you know, just ram it in there. There's lots of room. There's lots of room in there. Same thing with the uh, with this thing is ram it in when it's when it gets in there. Next thing I'm gonna do is just grab one of these little dowlings here, that 3 8 dowling I talked about, and just, uh, you know, give it a good glopping of, uh, is that a word, glopping on, of this carpenter glue stuff. And then just mush it around. You got some nice thick gloves on, so who cares? And then you ram it in that damn hole. Yeah, there it is sticking out, so you get the hammer. It's kind of hard to hold a hammer hold the phone, 
stay on the ladder and not die. But anything for my viewing audience, maybe one of these times I'll actually hit the thing. Okay, so you can see I got it in there pretty good, uh, but there's still a perimeter on this particular hole that you can still see a hole around. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and stuff in just a little bit more uh, tin foil around the edge. I don't think they're gonna wanna eat that anymore. So uh, last step here is just to fill the remainder with a bit of uh, uh, carpenter's glue just to seal up the hole. You can put some sawdust in there too if you're much more adventurous than I am, but I'm sawdust handy. All right, so you can see now I got it jammed pretty good with carpenter glue. I bought some of this uh, wood finish, uh, retouch, it's a pen. You could probably use a Sharpie too, I don't know. I paid like five bucks for this, I'm not sure it was worth it, but it kind of matches. This one, I don't know, is red mahogany. I don't know if this is a red mahogany color, but it kind of matches it. But right now I don't want to kind of put that on there because it's still a little goopy, still a little wet. So I'll wait until, uh, I'll wait until that dries a little bit and then I'll just paint over it with this stuff and before you know it that won't even be visible from. You got to keep lookout for them, you know. Um, they pop up all over the place. That's not one, that's just a knot. But look, here's another one of those little turkey holes. They started it and they abandoned it. But this will be a fresh start for them next year. They're pretty lazy insects. They don't like to do it over and over again. And so that's why you do the tin foil because if you just did a doweling, well, they'd go in there and they'd eat it. Uh, they'd start right again. Um, so the tin foil isn't very appetizing for these guys, so they tend to stop. And, and hopefully you can uh, get rid of them by having them flying in the woods and eating the trees, because, you know, that's what they ought to be doing. There's that spray. Like I said, nothing to it. When the other one dries, it'll look a lot like this. You know, if you were uh, probably a better uh, homeowner than I, you would um, you would fill this with um, with tin foil and uh, cover it the same way. In fact, I might come back tomorrow morning and do that, but you get the point. Sure is worth it living up here in the Catskill Mountain Range. I'll tell you, it's beautiful, great place to raise our kid and enjoy the sunshine and the clouds and the weather and fight these gold iron carpenter bees. So, look at the specks all over the walls. You can see them there and there and there and there. Those ones are carpenter holes that have been filled over the years. This house is early 90s, so, you know, getting 30 years old. What's that? A hawk or something flying by. Beautiful. Oh, two of them. Every spring, stay diligent. According to my web searches, you can't actually... Uh, you can't actually get um, structural damage from these things, but I don't know. It seems to me like if they're digging holes that deep that eventually they're going to make a mess of it. Anyway, this is the first of some home videos I might be making over the next while as I, a city mouse who's moved to the country from New York City and up to upstate New York to try and discover what else life can be about.